Welcome back. This is the Hoop Life Productions podcast. I'm AJ. I'm here with my co-host Chance. Chance, how you doing? I'm doing really good, man, and I think you know why. <laughs> yeah, why, how about you tell the audience why that is? Because the Detroit Pistons are going to win the 2021 <laughs> NBA title because we just beat the Lakers last night. Yeah, and they didn't have AD, but um, we're just going to ignore that and act like it doesn't matter. I mean, it it do, if you look at it, it doesn't really matter because you guys don't have anyone near LeBron James on your team anyway. So no, but listen. Jeremy Grant and Blake Griffin, I would take them any day <laughs> over LeBron James I mean, and Anthony Davis. I can tell you one thing. Uh, Wayne Ellington is about just as good as LeBron oh, you James. Mean Clay Thompson? Yeah, Clay Thompson, <laughs> man. He's out there. He's the 33 year old Clay Thompson. He's just yeah. sitting his peak right now, you know? Like, yeah. He's an all star, in my opinion. Yeah. He's actually shooting 52%. All, all of that was jokes, by the way. I, yeah. I obviously don't think. Jeremy Grant and Blake Griffin are better than Anthony Davis. Well, and the audience. Just, pro- be, just besides last night. Um, yeah, and the audience probably doesn't even care about the Pistons. But um, <laughs> yeah. you're saying Wayne Ellington's a great shooter. So since, since we're talking about great shooters, uh, today's episode is about a man who needs to get out of his situation immediately, which is Bradley Beal. We weren't even planning on recording this episode originally, but after watching again yesterday, him have a spectacular game and losing... Yeah, drop forty-seven. Yeah. I, I saw this stat, and it was said the last ten times he's dropped forty points, they lost. And with Beal, it's not like I don't think he's a ball stopper because, no. like, he'll you know he'll do his little ISO moves, get his shot open, but like it's quick moves. Um, you know, he's he can catch and shoot, play off the ball. So he's a he's, good he's a good ball stopper. He stops yeah. the ball from being in Russell Westbrook's hands. And it's not like he's shooting thirty percent to get thirty points, <clears throat> Russell no. Westbrook. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, Beal he needs this new situation. Um, the Wizards obviously aren't primed to win right now. So, so yeah, I came up with a list of I think nine teams that could realistically go after Bradley Beal. So. Before we start, I just wanted to get your opinion on like some potential teams that he could go to. Well, the teams that you obviously hear about the most are like the Lakers and Philly. Philly would be a lot more fun to watch for me personally, the way Embiid's playing. Um, but, I mean, I already see that you had this on a list here for you, but I've, I've been thinking the whole time since the beginning of the season, really, that Miami would be a great fit for him. Um, they just don't have that, like, Go to score like Jimmy Butler can be that guy when it's time, but they need a guy that does that all season. And like I remember when we were talking about guys like what was it our New Year's um, resolution podcast? Mm. Mine was Tyler Hero being that guy, and he's just too young. It's it's not ready for that yet. I mean, he would be perfect with Miami. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I think Miami right now would. Wouldn't mind a, a guy like Bradley Beal because I think they're six and twelve right now and lost five in a row, as we're doing this podcast. So, um, to kind of get over, since we're talking about the Heat, let's see like a trade package that they could potentially do. Um, it would have to be to like make contracts work, Myers Leonard and Olenek, or even uh, Andre Iguodala would have to be in there just to make the contracts work. But obviously. Washington isn't going to do that. Um, they would have to throw in probably Tyler Harrow and Presses Achua, I think, and probably some first two because if you're trading for a guy that's averaging 35 points a game <laughs> on a regular basis, um, you're going to have to give up a lot of your future, and that's that's pretty much what we got here. Yeah, it's just so much harder. I mean, this is kind of a obvious statement, but I'm still going to say it. It's, it's um, so much harder to trade a guy – as good as Bradley Beal or as good as a James Harden because you don't want to give him up for nothing in return, but there's so only few packages that people are going to also give up for him at the same time. So it, he's in a rough spot. I mean, there's few t- – it seems like all the teams that he would be great uh, be, be a great role on don't have the package if I was Washington to give up for, but yeah. Yeah, yeah I think – Tyler Harrell was really the piece in this trade that would be pretty, um, I guess, appetizing for the the Wizards, right? Um, Harrell had a great season last year and then continued into the bubble. Um, He struggled with injuries early on in this season, but when he's played, he's 
he's been pretty productive, I would say. So um, Harrow would be the centerpiece of the trade. And then for the Heat going forward, um, you pair Bradley Beal with Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler. So they they have another big three again of their own. And, you know, they could compete with teams like Brooklyn because with them starting out 6-12, and 12, it's a question of, of even like – of even them making the playoffs, right? And of course. Especially with Jimmy Butler um, apparently losing 12 pounds being in COVID. So, I mean, it's a tough situation for Miami right now. Yeah, I agree. Um, so you had some other ones on here, like Denver. Yeah, Denver um, personally was my favorite because they could offer a really good package, right? And yeah. it's the centerpiece of the trade would be Michael Porter Jr., who I think the Nuggets would be maybe a little bit tentative to trade him because I think potentially he could be a guy that's overall better than Beal at some point. Mm-hmm. But like with his injury history, I don't know if the Nuggets are patient enough to wait for him to like all of a sudden get consistently healthy and all that. So and you still don't know. Like I agree with you that his potential yeah. may be higher, but there's a great chance he stays healthy through his career and he's a. 20 point per game guy that's not Bradley Beal. I mean, you, either way, it's hard for them to get give up him because for the simple fact, like you said, the potential, but then at the same time, do you take the risk? Because the chances just of a guy being Bradley Beal are so low. So, yeah, you, if, if the Nuggets are putting MPJ in the trade package for Bradley Beal, they definitely have a shot at landing Beal, really. But to make contracts work, they'd have to throw in Gary Harris. Um, and I think the Wizards would also ask, ask for a couple first-round picks, maybe second-round picks as well. Like um, it takes, like I said before, it takes a lot to get a, a guy like Bradley Beal. So, so um, Boston's another one. Yeah. Um, I don't know what they would give up. Exactly. I mean, they have young guys in, like, Pritchard. and yeah, Boston isn't in a position to, like, send a great haul for Bradley Beal. But, like, if he requests a trade specifically to Boston, then that puts Washington in this kind of weird spot. Like, they would have to make a deal with Boston. Mm-hmm. And I think it would be – I don't think the Celtics are willing to give up Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum. So, just no, throw that out the window. Um, in doing that, you're probably throwing Boston out the window because I just don't see what else you would give up for him. Right, so I think it's Marcus Smart, Daniel Tice, um, Romeo Langford in their first-round pick, Aaron Naismith, and then probably a couple more first-round picks on top of that because none of those guys are near the caliber of Bradley Beal at the moment. Yeah. So do you see a scenario, personally, where Beal is not traded before the deadline? I do. I do. If they somehow go on a little bit of a run, like maybe get some more wins and make like a play-in tournament, and then even if they don't make it to the playoffs next year, hopefully Russell Westbrook's healthy again because right now it's clear that he's not, mm-hmm. um, you know, in peak performance health-wise. So, like, it would take a little bit. It would obviously take him not requesting a trade because we all think that's coming soon. But, like... If they also refuse to trade him, that's another situation, and it could be really uh, bad for them. So, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I with James Harden, it was, um, I never knew. I honestly, if you would have asked me, I thought he wouldn't have got traded just for the simple reason, like I already said, um, so hard to trade those guys. But I mean, he was wanting to be traded before the season even started, so. He had a big head start in that whole scenario where Beal, I could see, just getting screwed over in this situation very easily. Yeah, I just, I don't see a scenario where it works out for for both sides, that being Beal and the Wizards, to be honest, because um, they've already had bad injury luck early on in the season, and then you add COVID on top of that, they've been hit by that extremely hard, probably one of the, the worst teams to go through that. I mean, the Celtics did as well, but... Um, obviously they've got enough talent to get it done still. Um, but yeah, the Celtics, they could be a team for Bradley Beal. I wouldn't say they're the favorite, but they're definitely in the mix. Um, and let's move on to the team at the top of my list. I have the Golden State Warriors being in position. Um, I think outside of, um, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, cause he's hurt and Draymond Green, 
I think all those guys are off the board, but um, I think to make contracts work, you throw in Kelly Oubre, and then honestly, James Wiseman is probably their top trade piece, and yep. uh, I think they would definitely want Wiseman in a deal, and then that top three protect, top three protected Timberwolves pick, obviously the Timberwolves right now are the worst, one of the worst teams in the league at least, and if that pick is in the top three, the Warriors wouldn't get it, but there's also a good chance that it jumps out. So, yeah, Especially the team like Washington, uh, with their center Thomas Bryant going down for the year. I mean, yeah. they would love to have a young guy. I mean, anyone would take Wiseman. But. And I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say, like, Thomas Bryant's a guy that I would build around at center, oh, no, to be honest. Oh, no, of course not. But that James just makes Wiseman, it easier. obviously, the potential, everybody talks about it. Like, he's a guy that you could definitely build around. And I think... Wiseman's coming off the bench now for uh, for Golden State, and he's been like flourishing since he's done that. Yeah. So shout out to him. And that's really overall, the thing about Bradley Beal, I mean, as much as it sucks, it is awesome to see how great he's playing. Like, I remember when this guy got drafted out of Florida, like he was seen as a just a three and D type of guy, and uh, his progression into like a borderline superstar. He's obviously a star, right. but like. I never expected 35 points no, a game out of him. No, I mean, a few years ago, I didn't even have him in the same category as a guy like, uh, I don't know, Clay Thompson yeah, or exactly. uh, these guys like Booker and Mitchell. Like, I didn't see, but out of these last two and a half years or so, he's just... Like, I knew he was an elite scorer, but, like, not 35 points a game leading the NBA in yeah. scoring. Like, it's a monster. It's kind of crazy how much he's developed. But shout out to him for putting in the work yeah. in the offseason. It definitely shows... Um, let's talk about the fit with the Warriors. Um, I, I honestly would do the trade if I were them because, like, Steph Curry is he's is he isn't getting any younger, and then Clay Thompson is coming off of two knee surgeries. Um, Draymond Green, you know, he'll do his thing on the defensive end, not score much, but like, you put Beal in the mix, you got a lineup of Steph Curry, Bradley Beal, Clay Thompson. Draymond Green and whoever they want to throw in at center. Like, it won't matter, to be honest. No, it won't matter. As long as the dude can rebound. Like, they could put freaking Mason Plumlee in there, and I think they would be title contenders. And for a situation like just this season without Clay, we've seen Andrew Wiggins be, like, the, the number two guy on offense. And he has games where he looks really nice. But, for example, a guy like Clay coming back, as dominant as Clay is, he's not like he doesn't dominate the ball at all, like whatsoever. And a guy like Bradley Beal could be just as efficient as him, and also maybe take the ball out of Andrew Wiggins' hands more, <laughs> let him yeah. give Andrew Wiggins he less did. of a role. Speaking of Andrew Wiggins, he's actually been playing pretty well off the ball for the Warriors. I think he's shooting over forty percent from three, and then I think that would be the first time in his career. He's also, like, their best perimeter like, defender, And too. it just kind of goes to show how much culture matters for a guy yeah. like Andrew Wiggins. I think that's kind of what he needed. And, like... You know, Wiggins was one of those guys that came out of high school. Uh, well, he had come to, out of high like, school. I mean, in high to, school, he was, you know, compared to guys like LeBron and Kobe. And then he goes and does a one-and-done in uh, college at Kansas. He's really well. He's yeah. one of those guys that was, as a young kid, was, like, given everything because of his talent and when you don't have like any of that guidance because you're such a young star and you go straight into a role on a really just bad overall struggling, franchise struggling franchise yeah, yeah it it takes you in the wrong direction and i think we're finally seeing him you know but we, i feel like we say this every year though like, about it yeah, like it's, young players like need a culture i think yeah. to succeed like Unless you're just completely given the keys, like here, go, here's the ball, you know, go off some screens and score. But um, yeah. Wiggins definitely needed like a new situation, and he's actually thriving in um, Golden State. So shout out to him. Yeah. Um, that moves us to our next team, um, and this was this one is actually like like kind of the dark horse, I think, and it's the Atlanta yeah, Hawks. Atlanta, yeah. Um. The Hawks are like in position to trade for him because they just signed a few guys to I don't I don't want to say like massive contracts but like pretty big contracts to where they can make it work and then throw in some of their young guys too. Mm-hmm. So and Bogdanovich going down who plays the same position. Yeah. And they need that guy cuz I mean obviously he's a young player we got to give it time. Um 
But I don't think enough people are talking about how Trey Young has not been the same player this year that he has what he was last year. Yeah. I mean, he hasn't been bad. He's picked at it all. up a little as yeah. of late, but he's still he had, he's not 2019 Trey as of now. The thing that really surprised me, and I'm not going to give the amount of free throws per game because I don't want to get it wrong and I don't remember, but I do know for a fact that he's cut his free throw attempts in half this season, which for a young hmm. guy is like that's not good to see at all because get, getting to the line is it's hard to like figure out why that happens. Yeah, but you know you hope he'll figure it out because if he's shoot more free throws obviously Atlanta has a better chance to win but for sure in terms of a package in trading Bradley Beal you pretty much give away every young piece you have besides John Collins and Trey Young so yeah I'm throwing in DeAndre Hunter Cam Reddish Anyeka Okongwu um Tony Snell because he's has like a 12 million dollar contract and it makes the the trade work and then maybe a first round pick depending on you know if Washington wants to do the deal or not. And, and that would really change the direction of Washington bringing in Tony Snell. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's like a really good package for them compared to some of these other packages. Uh, Reddish and Hunter for, for Washington. Dude, yeah, like, this, I think this is the very best trade in terms of value that they can get. Like, you bring in guys like DeAndre Hunter, who was taking another big leap this season, and then Cam Reddish, who I think can be really good, and then Another guy, uh, the sixth pick, I think they took him, Anyaka Okongwu. He can be like their centerpiece at uh, center for them going forward. So like and you get a trio of young guys that you can build with going forward. Cor- so. Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't the Wizards in the same division as the Hawks, like with the Bulls and the Pistons, or is, are they in a different division? No, the Bull, the Bulls and Pistons are in like the cent- the Central Division. But I do the. The Hawks are, they could be with. I'm just curious if they're in, if the Hawks are in the same division as the yeah. Wizards, if that would, that would uh, like create a less of a chance of it happening. I know in the NFL that's how it is. They don't trade players to the same division. I don't know how that works in the NBA, but yeah, but I think, I think how scheduling works. You play every East team like four times, regardless. And so. then you play the teams in your division twice or four times a year. Is it is it twice a year? Um, I'm not sure. In the NFL, you play twice a year. Yeah, I know I it is in the NFL. You play twice. at least four times against your division yeah. rivals. Okay. So, see, I'm not sure if they're in the same conference off the top of my head, but yeah. I think they could potentially have a reason in them not doing the trade. But in terms of value, the Wizards, this is easily the best trade in terms of value for them really mm-hmm. getting three young pieces but um now we move on okay to the, so yeah okay. they, they're in the southeast division okay. with yeah. miami uh, charlotte yep. atlanta and orlando so yep. yeah i don't know if that would play into it at all it was just a thought yeah i don't think it matters as much in the nba yeah. as it does in the nfl but um moving on to a couple other teams that have been probably the most talked about in a Bradley Beal trade. Let's talk about the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, I think the only way that they are able to trade for Bradley Beal is if he specifically requests a trade to L.A., kind of like the Boston situation. But the Lakers would have to give up KCP, Dennis Schroeder, and Montrezl Harrell just to make the contracts work. Um, first, of, first of all, let me say, if I was the Lakers, I wouldn't do this. <laughs> Really? Like, I okay. love Bradley Beal, but I, that's just too many pieces, and they're already so dominant right now, or they're looking so okay. good. Then that's that's a starter, and then a Harrell, a guy who, he's not a starter, but he basically is in terms of minutes he plays, and I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe you look at teams like uh, Brooklyn, who said, no, we're going to go with talent over depth and see what that goes with, but I don't know. I feel like I, there's not much I would do to change in the position of the Lakers. Um, this is like the only, this might be the only package that I wouldn't do if I was the other team. Okay. So I was talking to my buddy Aiden earlier, shout out to him if he's watching this, probably not, but, (laughs) um, we were debating whether to do this and I was saying they should. Okay. And then he was saying they should, and then we had got in this little debate, but I was saying you package Beal, LeBron James and Anthony Davis together, they can match up with the Nets team. Yes, you're losing depth, but I think at the deadline, they're going to trade for, like, veteran expiring deals anyway. So, like, if you really think about it, 
they'll be at a lack of depth for until the trade deadline. But like guys want to play with LeBron, so they're gonna get. He's gonna end up with the pieces by the time the playoffs are on. So I wouldn't be necessarily worried about like a lack of depth because either way they're gonna make the playoffs with Beal or without. Yeah. But like, you want to talk about depth, but I don't think it'll. They'll need a whole lot if you have Bradley Beal, LeBron, and Anthony Davis. Yeah, I mean they already show like last year when they had less in terms of like scoring talent. They had less guys. They didn't have Schroeder and Harrell, and uh, they showed the AD. Yeah, their and team LeBron. was clearly less yeah. talented last year, and then and they won a championship. If you had a guy I like can't, Bradley like, Beal, necessarily disagree with you on that. I just yeah. I don't know if I would pull the trigger. Um, the thing about the Lakers though is. If you look at any casual any casual fan or Lakers fan is going to tell you that Bradley Beal is going to the Lakers because the yeah. Lakers fans they love to every time something happens if a player if there's beef with their teammates if a player wants out if a player is a free agent if, if a player has <laughs> one bad game yeah they're like oh to the Lakers every like time Kuzma the media does it Kuzma too. is so like he's ridiculed too much because they expect him to drop like twenty points a game. Well, but he has two guys at his position that are top five in the league. How do you? How are you expecting him to drop twenty points a game? And they did it to themselves. Like when Kuzma was first a rookie in his second year, and then his second year, they were saying that he was on the same level and better than Jason Tatum. Okay. I remember that. And and only people saying that were Laker fans. And so they got yeah. their hopes up for this guy, who's a really good player, but he's not that. And yeah, he was like a late first and, round pick. And so. now since he's not Jason Tatum. They're they're just disrespecting him to a whole new level, but it's enough Kuzma talk. <laughs> um, so, anyways, if you're not doing the trade right now, would you consider it in the off season? That yeah, way, you can sure. like like put the guy like put the, the guys pieces together. around him easier and sign guys. I would you know? probably do it in the off season for sure. Okay, because it's one of those things where if they get to the finals, I'd way rather have Bradley Beal. Because like, imagine at the end of the game, you have LeBron James, Bradley Beal, and Anthony Davis closing. I mean. That's I don't ridiculous. think anyone's going to beat you. Um, I'll ask you this. This is probably a pretty good debate that will start pretty soon, if they make this trade happen. Which which big three is more talented? Talented? The the Nets' big three or the Lakers' big three, potentially? Talent, I'll go with the Nets. Okay. But that doesn't make them better. I would take the Lakers in six, five okay. maybe. Okay. But just offensive talent, I mean, that's the Nets have two MVPs and a guy that hit – the shot to win the championship. Um, Kevin Durant is, in 2016, Kyrie Irving, but uh, Kevin Durant is in the conversation for the best scorer ever, like literally ever. Facts. James Harden statistically wins that conversation. I wouldn't put him as the best, but statistically he wins that conversation. And Kyrie Irving, when he decides to get his mind straight and play basketball, he's one of the best closers in the league. So if we're just going talent, I would go with those guys. But you look at the all-around, like, LeBron doesn't defend like he used to, but when he decides to, he's still the best defender. He's a better defender than those three guys in Brooklyn. And then Anthony Davis clearly is. And then Bradley Beal is not a slouch on defense. Um, it's close, but I would go offensive talent overall. I'd go Brooklyn. Okay, in terms of offensive talent. I think in terms of overall talent, okay, like player-to-player player comparison, I would go with the Lakers because LeBron – in my opinion, him and MJ, that conversation, it's a toss-up to me, but I would have to give the edge to LeBron because, like, he's done it for longer. Um, so, yeah, you have the best player of all time still playing like the best player of all time, by the way. And then Anthony Davis, a de- defensive player of the year, Canada every year. And then Bradley Beal, who low-key might be taking over the, the best shooting guard spot in the league, right? He's right there. I mean, in terms of stats, he's putting up putting up better stats than James Harden. Yeah, right and now. it's hard because Harden really he plays the two, but he runs that offense. Like he's basically the point guard, so right. it's kind of hard to decide even what he is. But from a shooting guard aspect, I mean, like guys that literally play somewhat off the ball, like Beal, Mitchell, Booker, even a healthy Clay. I think he's better right now than healthy Clay ever was. Um, uh, I don't know some other guys. C.J. McCollum as well as he's playing. Beal is the top guy out of all those guys. You can decide what you want to do with Harden, but I completely agree with that. Jalen Brown is at the two, and he's – or is he playing the three? Um, I think it's 
fully healthy. I think it's Kemba and then Marcus, Marcus Smart, Smart okay. and then Jalen Brown at the three. Okay. So yeah. they do a little bit of small ball, but yeah, I mean it's. But yeah, overall, yeah, I agree with Beal. So yeah, we got three teams left that I think are con- in consideration to trade for Bradley Beal. Let's talk about the Philadelphia 76ers. I think they have the best trade piece that is maybe available in trade talks, and that's Ben Simmons, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think Washington would consider just a straight-up Ben Simmons for Bradley Beal swap. What do you think? I agree with that. I was just l- l- trying not to laugh thinking of the fact of Russell Westbrook and Ben Simmons on the floor together. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the one thing. That, that would be awful floor spacing. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I mean, I agree. That's that the only thing that would hold me back, to be honest. Ben like, Simmons, Bradley Beal is probably the only straight-up, like, trade guy-for-guy guy trade that there is mm-hmm. in, in this scenario. Um, I think Philly might even have to throw in a first for a guy that's averaging 35 a game. Yeah. Like, as opposed to a guy that's averaging 11, but obviously Ben Simmons is better at every other part of the game. So, And I would love to see this. Philly's one of my favorite teams out east, especially now the way that uh, Embiid is playing. He's my MVP right now. Um, and the way that he's just dominating, if he has a guy to kick it out to shoot like Bradley Beal, they're, mm. they, they're, the, they're right there with Brooklyn in the east. I think they already are. But with if you replace Ben Simmons with Bradley Beal... I feel like they would have to throw Bradley Beal at point guard, to Think be so. honest, right? Or would they start Milton? Cause because they have, like... Jake Milton's averaging 17 off the bench. Really? Right? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he, since he's comfortable in that role, I would keep him there, to be honest. Like, right? If he's putting yeah. up 17 yeah. as opposed to starting last year and not doing nearly as well. But um, if they trade for Simmons, you pretty much, I think you just put Beal at point guard and then... Put Seth Curry and Danny Green and Tobias and Embiid. So the, That's the a, lineup's the same. Those besides, are some snipers, though. Like yeah, that makes Tobias like, like you can't get better shooting around Joel Embiid than that. That makes Tobias out of all the non centers. That make Tobias the worst shooter in the lineup, which is just says a lot because he's no slouch. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I think for both teams, long term, that's a pretty good deal, right? Because sure. Beal is going to be in his prime for probably another five years. Mm-hmm. And we're not sure if Simmons is going to take another step because he's failed to so far. But him and Westbrook, yeah, I, I do agree that's really weird. But long term, at some point, Russell Westbrook is going to retire. And Simmons is still probably still going to be there because he just signed an extension. So, so yeah, I like the trade for both teams, to be honest. Um, moving on to our last two teams, let's talk about... The Pelicans, the worst team on our list in terms of record right now. Um, that's that's because the Pistons aren't on our list. Yeah, because we don't <laughs> have anyone to trade for. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the Pelicans, I'm thinking a package of... It's a, They're going to have to give up a lot because none of these guys are like, like pop out at you, right? Um, Lonzo Ball, J.J. Redick, Jackson Hayes, Nikhil Alexander-Walker... And probably at least three first round picks, right? Um, and I think the I think the Wizards also throw in like Isaac Bonga and Mo Wagner or something. I don't know. If, it's because the Pelicans are giving up four players. Like they have to get like more than one guy back, right? Like especially yeah. in season trading. Yeah, if if I was the Wizards in this position, I would hang the phone up. <laughs> like really? okay. yeah, yeah, just I just it's not enough. Um, even the three first rounders is still not like, that's the value there. Like if I'm them, all I'm looking at is those three first rounders, and I still wouldn't do it. Like, so you don't like, I mean, Alexander Walker or Jackson Hayes or Lonzo Ball. Those are all really those are all solid players. Zion, I mean, Lonzo, you could even say it's above solid when he's playing well. But uh, I just when you look at a guy like Bradley Beal, like I feel like I don't know what they would ask what. What Washington would really ask for in in return, like yeah. I want to feel like they would want Zion, and yeah, then the Pelicans or, would just hang up or on Ingram, him, right? yeah. And either way, they're gonna hang up, and yeah. Um, I mean, it would be awesome even to for, watch that Pelicans yeah. team, but even for the Pelicans though, like you use you're losing like all your depth, right? Yeah. So yeah. it'd be really interesting, I think. Like Beal with Zion and Brandon Ingram, like in terms of a trio of scoring. 
it doesn't get much better than that. Um, One thing that I've noticed as we've gone over all these trade options is that uh, Bradley Beal, we seem to repeat that he would be great along every player. Like He seems that he could fit with anybody, which says a lot about him as a player. Right. Um, Because I haven't seen a single team yet where I'm like, oh, he wouldn't make this team better. Right, because he can play off the ball and with the ball, and then he competes on the defensive end too. So So he's a guy that can fit in pretty much any team, like you said. Um, So, yeah, moving on to our last team of the video, I got the Dallas Mavericks. And I actually came up with two separate trades because I think, um, you know, there's there's two trades that I really think – in terms of long-term and short-term, um, Washington would consider. The first trade I had was Tim Hardaway Jr., Josh Richardson, and then literally every first-round pick they have in pick swaps, right? Yeah. Like, this is this kind of reminds me of the James Harden trade just for Bradley Beal, like mm-hmm. you're giving up a couple players and then every pick you have. And then the other one I came up with was Christoph Porzingis in two first-round picks for Bradley Beal. What do you think about those? I think I would do that first one if I was Dallas in a heartbeat. Um, I know it's a lot of picks, but last year the Dallas Mavericks were on a like historical pace offensively. Um, their numbers were ridiculous. And then Bradley Beal himself led the Wizards last year. to As bad as they were, they were also on a historical pace in terms of like points scored per quarter or whatever. Mm-hmm. So if you put those guys together, that offense is going to be – the best in the NBA, maybe, or right there with, like, Brooklyn. I think the Mavericks have been a little too patient in terms of roster construction because when you've got a top top eight or so player in Luka Doncic on, on his rookie deal, making, like, seven million. You got to hurry. Like, 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 yeah, like, do it right now. Like, give him superstars right now. And you can still sign him to an extension and be maybe in the luxury tax. But, like, I, I just think they're being a little too patient with this roster. It's kind of similar to, for NFL fans out there, what's going on with uh, Deshaun Watson and the uh, Texans right now. Like, he was a great rookie, and they just, they've struggled to surround him with a competing team for years, yeah, and we see real. what's happening there. And we don't want to see that happen with Luka because everyone loves Luka. So. I saw this post on Instagram. They were talking, like, Desha- Bradley Beal is the Deshaun Watson yeah. of the NBA right yeah. now. Yeah. I think they can rely relate excuse me in terms of a lot of I think they can relate in terms of like them just wanting to be in a winning culture because they're that good and that you know that yeah solid of a player and I I think we feel we have a lot more empathy towards those guys as compared to like a James Harden who his situation with Houston we looked at it like okay this sucks that his ceiling with Houston is pretty much or the door is closed but some of that was his fault. Like they, they didn't win because of Harden sometimes, and I don't think we look at Bradley Beal like that at all, or we look at no one looks at Deshaun Watson like that at all either. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and and we don't want to see Luca end up in that position. So, like yeah, you said, a, yeah, I want to, I want to get your opinion on the second trade. Like, what do you think of Kristaps Porzingis as like a trade piece? Do you think he has a lot of value or no? I think he has a lot of value. I think it's just tough for Dallas to decide if they would give up his potential or not because his his the reason he has so much value is for one he he's well, he's proven to be somewhat injury prone but when he plays he's so good and um I don't think I'd give him up um personally just because of the fit with him and Luca looks really good when he's out there mm-hmm. but you just never know like how if he if he has another major injury then this is going to sound stupid. Like, of course, take Bradley Beal. So, I don't know. I would do it if I was Washington, if they're looking for the best package. If they're getting, what you say, two firsts and KP, like, yeah, I would do that for sure. Okay. So, so if you're the Mavericks, you would rather send Tim Hardaway Jr., Josh Richardson, and then four firsts to Washington that, rather than the, the second Yes, second because trip. even as risky it is, giving up that many picks, they're trying to contend right now anyway. Yeah. So. And then I think, even though they're giving up a couple of like their floor spacers, I, they ha- they still have plenty on their roster outside of them. Like, I would say, like, 
one through twelve, that's like the strength of their team, like is their depth, right? Would you agree with that? Mm-hmm. So completely. So yeah, that's all our teams. Um, let us know in the comments down below which team you think would be the best fit for Bradley Beal. Free Bradley Beal. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's gonna be it for our episode nine, I think, of our yep, podcast now. Nine. This was the Bradley Beal, pretty much trade machine video. Trade machine. Um, so yeah, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to drop a like, hit the subscribe button if you are new. We are the Hoop Life Productions podcast. Love you guys. Peace out. Have a good one.